G'day Hammerheads! So, very special episode today. We're gonna to be looking at some 40 volt Makita hammers. Now the whole range is of course pretty new. This guy has been around for a while, but this guy is fresh off the boat. I don't know that it's even available in Europe and the Americas yet, so it's more of an Asia Pacific thing. Yes, we finally get something first. So here we have the HR-010 and its bigger brother, the HR-001. Thanks Makita, that's not gonna confuse anyone. These guys run on the 40 volt XGT system. And today we're gonna to be looking at how well these guys perform, as well as comparing them to their 18 volt counterparts. So stick around, we're gonna have a Mactastic time. Uh, hang on, we're gonna have a, it's gonna be te teal -rific. We're gonna have a teal. Now this guy is obviously the 40 volt version of the still very new uh, DHR183. We did a video on this little guy pretty recently, so go check that out. But this guy is, I'm gonna say, an instant classic. It's small, it's powerful, uh, really compact. Uh, it's designed to have a uh, dust extractor on there. We really like that one. And this is basically a not quite as compact, um, but it's gonna be more capable. These guys are obviously based on the same design, but the 40 volt one is thicker and stockier, and uh, it's not just got a bigger battery on there, it's got a bigger hammer mechanism, it's got a bigger motor area, uh, generally a little bit bigger all around. And the big difference between these two guys is gonna be that the 40 volt version has a hammer only function, yes. Uh, <laughs> But like all the tiny Makita hammers, she doesn't actually hammer unless you're pressing on the chuck. A minor difference is the 40 volt tool has the, uh, the Bluetooth uh, adapter slot as well. But they've got the same wobbly vibration dampening handle. Uh, I believe they, they take the same dust extractor. All up pretty similar. Just, just in the hands here though, this guy feels considerably heavier, partly because of that giant battery on there. Now the big boys, this guy is the DHR-242, uh, also called something else in the Americas. And this guy is obviously, you know, very solid tool, but it had a couple of weird things I wasn't sure why Makita chose to do it. Mainly uh, lack of vibration dampening handle, uh, and also they've sort of scaled it down in terms of drilling power a little bit compared to the older version. So 24 millimeters rather than 26, which is more what this class of tool is called. Ugh, now this guy. What an absolute beast. Uh, I gotta say, I really like the styling on this fella. Extra big chin on here. Um, probably not because it's needed, but more just to help with mounting the, uh, the dust extractor on there. It does, I must say, make it look extra industrial just having this giant bloody chin on there. This guy also has the volume control, or speed control, I guess you'd call it. So that's set to five. <laughs> So you can set it right down. Uh, if for some reason you are using a gigantic rotary hammer to do a small delicate job. So the new Makita handles, I do like them. They are sort of wobbly. They are sort of wobbly inside, similar to the DeWalt, the nicer DeWalt ones. So when I first got this, I was a little unsure of how to really move the handle nicely, but it turns out if you unscrew that, you can press the press the screw in there and then that lets you shift it nicely. A little bit nicer and easier to use than the old style where you just got a screw and then mm, 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 move it around. So like the little one, we got the Bluetooth port. We've also got this rafter hook, which is only mountable on the one side. And it's also removable, which I quite like because I don't use these things, so I like to have the option to remove them if I can. And you know, it's a pretty bulky little item there. So the 40 volt is a big hammer. It is 28 millimeters or about inch and an eighth capacity. Whereas the 18 volt is 24 millimeters or like just under an inch. And the big 40, she's got this AVT, which inside here is actually a counterweight, which oscillates out of phase with the uh, hammer piston. Gives you a nice smooth ride. All right, let's take a look at the specs. So here we are in bold. This is all the uh, hammers in this video here. Uh, I won't go through them all, so just pause it if you wanna see. But notably, we don't have an American name for the two little guys yet. And interestingly, if we look at the impact power, which is just these two columns multiplied together, uh, the new little 40 is probably gonna be drilling faster than the big 18, even though 
she's rated to 20 mil versus 24. So that's going to be interesting to see how that turns out. All right, so let's check the revs, starting with the, the small 18. So about 1080, just under the 1100, they reckon. Now the small 40. Wow, 1365, a little bit faster than the 1350 that they advertise. Nice. The big 18. About 920, so that's just under the 950 they advertise. And the big 40. Oh boy, look at this thing. Jesus. Okay, so on low speed it's about 300. And on full speed. Eight thirty-five. Are you sure? That's a little low. Hmm. So they advertise nine eighty RPM. So that's a little bit disappointing, especially seeing as the little forty volt got more than its advertised RPMs with this very same battery. So uh, interesting. Alrighty. So let's get drilling. Uh, as usual, the first test that all my hammers go through is the 12 by 80 mil speed drill. So for all these testing videos, we're gonna have them in this order. So small 18, small 40, then big 18, big 40. And five amp hour battery on the 18s, four amp hour on the 40s. Let's see how they go. Alrighty, so the 12 mil speed drill. Uh, zooming all the way out here to see the whole pack, we can see that the two teals down the front, they're the 40s, and the two teals in the middle, they are the 18s. So a big difference there between the two voltages. The front teal is no surprises there, the big 40, 8.19 seconds, and that is just a little bit behind the other 28 millimeter hammer we've got, this Hikoki. Next up in a very good position, we've got the little 40, so 8.72 seconds. That is, as predicted, faster than the big 18, obviously faster than the little 18 too. So the stats did suggest that the little 40 would be drilling faster than the big 18, but what really amazes me is the little 40 has done like the same as the mighty DCH-133 from DeWalt. This guy is a truly excellent hammer, and well, it's ahead of it in the rankings, but honestly, that's point 08 seconds difference, uh, that's going to be the same, like realistically exactly the same there, well within the margin of error. So really incredible stuff there from the little 40. Makita has done an awesome job with that little tool. All right, so next up is the max capacity drill. And so they are each getting their rated maximum capacity except for the big guy. This range of drill bits does not go up to 28 millimeters without getting super long. So uh, for now, the 28 millimeter hammers, this very big size here, they're all just gonna be done with 26 or just a bit bigger than an inch. And at some point I'm gonna have to do all the real big hammers together to sort that out. For now, this is what we're working with. They're all drilling in 80 mil again. So let's see how they go.
All right, so for the max capacity, we've got a totally different spread now. We've got the two bigger hammers grouped down here and the two smaller ones up front. Well, you know, they're drilling smaller holes, so proportionally that's gonna be a bit easier for them. Once again, the little 40 is absolutely killing it up here. 27.97 seconds with a 20 mil bit. So drilling faster with a bigger bit than the little 18, but the little 18, she still did really nicely, 34.91. And with the 24 millimeter bit, the big 18, 47.37. So, you know, not too shabby. And the big 40, 48.23 seconds. So this is using a 26 millimeter bit. So uh, the same size as this guy and all these guys at the end drilled. So far superior performance at the really big size to all the one inch hammers. So this guy is definitely a bigger class of hammer. All right, so our last test is gonna be chipping. Now the small 18 does not have hammer only mode, so she's sitting this one out. But for these three, we've got a flat chisel like that. Got some concrete retaining bricks, uh, marked out 50 mil around the edge, and basically just tried to knock that edge off. All right, so let's see how they go. Okay, so the chipping test, a very clear pattern here. Now the numbers there, there's a big spread to these numbers in this particular test, but hey, we can still see the pattern very, very clearly. Averaging up seven runs uh, for the big 40, we got 1.17 seconds. And for the little 40, 2.08 seconds. And as predicted by the stats, she is actually faster than the big 18, 4.05 seconds. So how the hell have Makita managed to make these two little guys so damn good? Well, let's take a look at the parts list and get an idea. So this is the exploded view of the little 18 parts list just on the Makita website. Uh, and if we take a look at the hammer section here, let's take a look at the actual, the striker pin, which is like the center part of the hammer mechanism there. It's number 40. All right, number 40. So if we go look up that part, well, we'll see that that is actually the same striker as in the DHR-171. And if we take a look at that same part from the little 40 volt, uh, number 48, and she turns out to be the same part as in the DHR-182, the Teal Terra. So it seems like the little 18 is basically a faster revving version of Old Faithful, the DHR-171, which, you know, was a very nice hammer. So the little 40 is actually an improved version of this guy, the DHR-182. Now this guy, the Teal Terra, is the absolute king of compact rotary hammers. And somehow, they've managed to make this one an even better version using a lot of the same parts. So the actual striker part is the same in the 40 volt as in here, but they must be making it actually travel further in order to get higher impact force in this one with the same revs as that one. Love it. So why 40 volts? Well, partly because Makita had an old 36 volt system and they also still have some tools which are double 18 volts. So, you know, 36 volts. Now they do say that it's 36 volts on here. So the 40 volts is gonna be like, you know how DeWalt says 40 volt max. Uh, it's nominally 18 volts, but you know, the peak voltage it'll get is 40 volts or something like that. So that's what they're doing here basically. And if we check the voltage, 40, 40.9, so there you go, it is actually 40 volts. When it's under load, it'll probably be more like 36. And the little guy, 20, well there you go. So uh, one thing I do like about these giant things is that the battery indicator and the release switch are on the one end. Unlike the 18 volt where you've got where you've got the switch on this end and the indicator on that end. Um, and I really like this because it means that the user interface for the battery is all on the one side. 
It avoids, for instance, this situation where you can't actually check the battery level before, you know, picking up the tool and using it. And the 40 volt charger, quite nice. Um, it is a fairly big unit, as you can imagine, but it does have the, the little mounting keyholes there. And what I like about this one is it's got three different colors on the lights. So at a glance, you can tell, you know, what it's up to. Uh, a lot of chargers will just have like one color that sort of flashes fast or slow, and that's really annoying. And it's also raised, so you can see it from the side. So basically, if this is charging, you know, at the other end of the room, you can tell at a glance what it's up to. All right, so where does this all leave us? Well, I gotta say guys, I reckon Makita has absolutely killed it with these two little drills here. I absolutely love these guys. Uh, drilling small holes is my bread and butter. I'm usually installing little bolts like that, you know, 10 or 12 millimeters. Now I do wish they'd made the 18 volt A3 mode, but it's kind of where the market's going. They're starting to leave the chipping function off the smaller hammers. Everyone's doing it, can't blame them. I do wish it had it though. Uh, and the 40 volt, what an absolute killer. I am super impressed with this little guy. It has exceeded its own rating. Now, having seen the previous version, I had thought this guy would perform pretty damn well, but oh, I've got to say, I was blown away by how powerful this little bastard was. Um, partly because it is actually revving faster than the advertised speed, so that means it's going to be hitting a little bit faster too, but more importantly, it's going to be hitting a little bit harder, which is just incredible. Uh, to call this a 20 millimeter hammer when it was beating several 26 millimeter hammers in some of these tests, I mean, Makita, they could advertise bigger, but hey, they don't feel like it. So who am I to judge? I really love this little guy, and I think it's an awesome addition to the 40 volt range, and they're just, you know, the, the, the market in general. Because you know me, I do love a tiny hammer. So if you're using the XGT range and you're currently using this guy to drill, say, 12 millimeter holes or drill vertically, you are gonna wanna grab this little one straight away and save yourself a whole lot of lugging around. Save this guy for drilling the big holes. Because this little fella is an absolute killer. I love this little guy. Makita has absolutely killed it with this one. However, I cannot quite say the same for these two. Um, obviously they're perfectly fine, they're gonna be you know, great tools for you if this is the kind of size tool you want. There's absolutely nothing wrong with these at all, but the design decisions that Makita have made with both of these is to give them a little less impact force than th what is standard for that caliber of tool. So this little guy, um, not quite a one inch tool, a little bit smaller than a one inch, whereas one inch is pretty standard in the market. And then this one, it has a little less impact force than some of the others like the Hikoki. But then also this particular version, as we saw, doesn't seem to go up to full speed, you know? Like that's, um, I gotta say I'm a little bit disappointed. It still handled itself very well, especially with the 26 millimeter drill, but I just kind of feel like they're kind of leaving a little bit on the table. And you know, you don't want to leave it on the table, whatever it is, you want to drink it, eat it, play it. I, I don't know. I don't understand that idiom, sorry. But that said, you know, it is still just a big awesome hammer and yeah, nothing wrong with it at all really. So if anyone out there does have a taco and this drill and they're able to measure the RPMs for us, let us know because I'm really interested to see like is that just a quirk of this particular one or is it a design thing? Like what's going on? Maybe the knob sort of didn't get put on quite right or something. I'm not sure. Look, she still works great, but I just thought, you know, she should have a little more RPM going on there. All right, Hammerheads, so there you go. Hopefully this has been enough teal talk for your time. Uh, I am starting to get into the 28 millimeter hammers a bit. So if there's something in particular you'd like to see with this class of tool, like, you know, hammering concrete or whatever, let us know and I'll see what I can do. These guys, I mean, they're not gonna let you down, but boy, the little ones, oh, Makita, absolutely killed it. Love it. So, thanks for watching, and from Team Teal and I, uh, that'll do us. Scratches later, and thanks for watching.